I've grabbed this off of Adobe Stock. This is a just a lion a lion image. Um, again, to save time, I did a selection. I used calculation selections and I cleaned the selection up a little bit with an overlay brush. Um, I didn't tell you about that, but um, let me just talk about it quickly. Um, if you um, if you have a selection and you're on a mask, um, you can go over here to your mask, and let me just bring my mask up. When you're on a mask and you're trying to clean up a selection, if you take a soft brush, and may, many of you prob probably already know this, but I'll say it for those who maybe know, knew. If you take a soft round brush, put it at about 30 or 35% opacity and put it in the overlay mode. And you need to clean up your selections. When you are painting with white in the overlay mode, you can clean up the white part of your selection and make your whites whiter and not have to worry about destroying your blacks. Okay, so you can you could increase the density, if you will, of the edges of your whites. Kind of bring back some of this texture of these whites without destroying your black edge. And then you can go to your black and you could clean up some of the haloing around the edge of your blacks without destroying any of your whites. Because when you are in overlay mode on a brush, overlay cannot, when is you're painting black in overlay, it cannot go past the 50% gray mark. Black can only paint out up to 50% gray. So it cannot paint on white when you're in overlay mode with black and vice versa for white. So it's a great way to clean up your edges on a mask. And so that's what I did with this thing is I first did a calculation selection, which I showed you calculations already. And then I cleaned it up with the overlay. So that's how I got this. But what I wanted to show you in this technique is how do you get rid of this? So I've got a nice selection here. I love all my hair, but my hair, again, just like the tree, my hair is blue. So here's another technique. On the trees, we did hue and saturation was one technique. Inner glow was another technique. Here's a third technique I want to show you today, which is to just paint it, okay? So here's the finish. I painted it. I just painted it. I went back and I painted it kind of like the original image was. I put a couple layers of of of, of uh, blank layers over the top, and I grabbed a paintbrush, um, a fur paintbrush, and I painted it. So this is the finish. Let me just demonstrate for you on some blank layers. So again, throw a blank layer over the top of it. Grab a fur brush. And just grab some colors close to where you're at and paint in those colors. If you hold your old key down on a paintbrush, you can sample your colors. And just grab colors, paint paint your colors back in again. And what I did was I painted in the oranges first. This is a kind of a dot brush. You can see my dots there. Um, so I wasn't I wasn't doing anything real solid. And I'm kind of going scrubby on it so that it's not real. And then after after I painted in some of those colors, 
then I took a different brush and one of my shader brushes and I went back over it again and did those tips. Because if you look at the original image, right, the original image had kind of this blackness on the edges. And so I just put two layers on and painted those things back in again. So now I have my lion with all of that beautiful little cut out fur and I just painted it back in again. So there's lots of different techniques that you can use um, depending on how you wanna clean up those edges. A question, Terry, is the goal always to have a, a binary, a black and white mask and not anything with uh, gray tones in the mask? Oh, not, necess not necessarily. Um, you know, there are times that, um, th there are times, especially when I'm doing things like with watercolors and things like that, that, that I would have uh, very much a, uh, a mask based on, you know, luminosities of all kinds of different, you know, grayscales. Um, on these particular ones, because these are selections, I'm showing you selections where you're going to pick the element up and put that into another, another uh, element you know, then I try to get a clean selection because you want that element to go into another another uh, document. Thank you. If when you use refined mask, and I'm, I'm gonna open up another one here, uh, another image here. This one here, let's see. Let's open up this one here. There's one other technique I want to show you from here. So on this one, I used a technique, um, just the regular old refined mask um, technique. Um, and again, on here, I left the um, um, semi, what you, I guess you would call semi-transparent mask. If I If I look at the mask here, I don't know if I if I see on this one the the it's very semi transparent along the edges. I didn't necessarily clean that up really harsh, um, but and so I didn't I didn't paint this one out um, because on this one I want to demonstrate to you a different technique. Um, if you uh, when I did this one I used the refined mask. Um, most of you I'm sure familiar with when you do a uh, selection, like um, you go, you come into your thing and maybe you use the selection tool and you do select and mask um, and you do a normal selection, right? Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but... Um, but you, you know, do your normal refine mask and then you use this tool right here for refining the edges, right? So that's what that's the tool that I had used to get to um, to get to this uh, this particular one here. Um, but what what I wanted to show you is on this particular image when I did that, I, I got a, a a nice mane and fur that I could then paint, but I also was left with this really weird selection around the whole body of the cat that I didn't want. So um, it, so again, having having multiple tools in your toolbox is really important. So I want to show you. We already showed you how to paint the fur. So how do I clean up these legs without messing up my fur? Because if I were to stay in the refined mask and continue to like shift my edge in or to try to mess with that fur, um, I would be doing it globally and I might mess up the fur in order to recover those legs. So I came out of the refined mask and kept that, kept that mask and I'm going to show you another technique. Now that I'm out of the refined mask, I'm going to show you what's called the minimum filter to clean up these legs and leave that mask alone. So I'm going to do my hair 
the same way I just showed you on the other line. I'll probably just paint that hair and keep it because I want that beautiful, soft, flowy hair. But I, I don't I don't want that rim. I don't want that halo around the legs. OK, so I could do a, a, a several different ways with this. I could use the smudge tool and I could just smudge them in. I could grab them and I could just cut them out. Um, but I'm going to show you a cool little filter thing that you can use that's also a tool to put in your toolbox because that's what this is about, right? And we only have four minutes left. So go on your mask, grab your lasso tool, grab an edge around the leg like this, go up here to filter, go to other. Go to minimum and then play with this little slider here and pull this slider in until it's gone. Two point three pixels, gone. And then do the same thing on your other legs. And because it's the same filter, you can probably just hit the filter thing and you're good. Grab this leg. Hit filter, gone. Grab this edge. Alt control F is the shortcut. And do alt control F. Because obviously it's the same size. I think I can do this whole tail at the same time. And so now, again, this is like a, a cool little technique, works great on rocks and things like that, where you just got a weird little edge, or maybe you just got a weird little edge in some places, but you don't have it on the whole image. So now if I zoom out, I've got, I've got my, my lion's legs are looking good. And now I can clean up my fur and keep all my great fur and just put up, you know, paint that fur out. And now I got a great selection. Terry, we have a question in the chat. Show okay. again where the slider is. The slider for? Um, it does not say in the chat. Oh, okay. Right? So, so yeah. So if you're going to use minimum, it's a filter. So just, uh, select, select the area where your, where your, um, your halo is go up to filter other minimum and you'll get a pop up a dialog box and then put it on zero and then just slide it over until the halo is gone. That's great, thank you. And then because your halo is the same size, rather than opening the dialog box all the time, just keep selecting your next area and then repeating the same filter. You can repeat the same filter with alternate control F. Then you don't have to open the dialog box every time because you don't have to reset the size of pixel because the pixel size is gonna remain consistent around your whole image.